Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer. I'm from Randall's Island Park Alliance and welcome to our first Facebook Live post. Today we are going to talk to Nick Stores, our urban farm manager. He's going to show us a little bit about the farm. Here we go. Hey, Hi, Nick. good morning guys. How are you? We're doing well. <laughs> Excellent. Um, right, so I want to give you guys a quick glance around the farm. We'll see what's in growing right now and get a chance to see what we're going to have available as we go into this fall with the fall festival with the um with a new group of school groups that are coming in as well so actually right behind me is one of the first things i want to show you this is actually a really cool technique that we use a lot so this is called intercropping and right up on top the big bushy plants you're looking at with this really beautiful yellow flower this is an okra plant and if you look Right underneath that flower, you'll see some of our baby okra that are just getting ready to harvest right now. Um, this is one of the things that we pick and harvest with kids a lot. We like to add it to stir fries. We like to add it to a lot of our soups. It's a little bit slimy and it really kind of like pulls the soup together. It's used a lot in gumbo down south, but it tastes really good fresh. And underneath it, we have the very last of our cucumber plants. And so what's very cool about the way that we're growing is that we tried to grow as many different plants together in the same space as possible. So we've got cucumbers growing underneath our okra, and then as the cucumbers get old and we pull them out, the okra's getting really big and sort of fill that space in nicely. So they help each other. So they help each other, exactly. And we get a little bit more bang for our buck when we look at our kind of our four by eight foot bed. Well, why don't you come with me? We're gonna head up the hill okay. and see if we can't find what else is growing right now. Look at this, we have zucchini, personal right. favorite. So there's a lot of zucchini, there's a lot of different summer squashes. Right down, we can either eat the fruit itself, this is one of our baby summer squash, but we can actually eat the flowers as well. And so sometimes we eat the flowers with the kids. Eating flowers is a lot of fun. It not only turns into a science lesson where we learn about pollination and how bees and other insects help our vegetables grow, but it they can be tasty in themselves. And a lot of the kids that come into the farm never had a chance to eat flowers before, and it's really good. What does it taste like? Mm. <laughs> It's really fresh. It's got this little bit of sweetness right at the base where that nectar is inside the flower. And um, this one in particular, squash blossoms in particular, are really like juicy. I and mean, they almost burst in your mouth when you take a bite of them. But come on up. Okay. So what else do we have growing as we are walking mm. up the hill? So as we come up the hill, we are actually growing a little bit over 200 varieties of fruits and vegetables this year. Wow. And what we really try to do is when we're growing any one crop, for instance, our radishes, we try to make sure that we're not just growing a single variety of radish, that we'll take something like this and grow it alongside, let's see if I can find one that's ready. How do you know when they're ready? This one's burst a little bit, but this is one of our red radishes as well. How can you tell when they're ready to? So I'm mostly looking at where the stem meets the root itself, and I'm looking for kind of a nice, we call it a full shoulder. So right in here, this part of the radish is just poking out of the ground. And when I see a good full shoulder, when it's really kind of filling out nicely, then I know that the root's ready to harvest. I'm gonna see if we have any of our red meat variety in here too. What do we got? Ah, this one. This one is one of my favorites. This one is really lumpy, but this is actually a Korean or Japanese radish. It's called a daikon. And when Mario pulls plants out of the ground and throws them at the Oompa Loompas or whatever they are, right. um, he's pulling daikon radishes out of the ground, which is a fun fact that <laughs> I think really connects with the right generation. That's a really cool fact. So let's see if we can walk around the Penicetum. 
here we actually have more radishes coming in that will be ready for the kids this October. Wow, this is gorgeous. There's a lot happening in the farm right now. We're actually really lucky. Um, right, we're going to be doing a harvest festival in a couple weeks, and I think the farm is going to be really full for it. When is the harvest festival? The harvest festival is going to be on October 1st from noon till 4 p.m., and it's going to be this, we're going to have face painting, we're going to have kite flying, we're going to have a contra dance, all sorts of good things happening. Can people explore the farm during the Harvest Festival? Absolutely. We'll even have the chickens out so people will be able to interact with the chickens a little bit. Okay. Um, and it does. It fits really well into a lot of the programming that we have here on Randall's Island. So even this weekend, you can come out for our Get Hooked program where you'll be along the south side of the island and can learn from some experts how to fish, get a chance to play around in the East River and learn about some of the ecology that's happening in the East River right now and the role that Randall's Island has in some of the research on it. When is Get Hooked? What time is that? I'm not sure. What time is it to Get Hooked? 11. That's right. They wake up earlier than we do, I guess, right? <laughs> 11 a.m. Because we come around the corner. I want to show you one of my favorite parts of the farm. Because one of the things that I find really cool that we're growing is rice. And it's one of those things that everybody eats almost every day. It's a, it's a really important staple of our diet. And yet people rarely see it outside of a five pound bag of rice on the grocery store shelf. And so what we really do is we really give, especially kids, but also adults, an opportunity to come in, see how that rice is grown, um, kind of learn some of the story behind that rice and get a chance to work on it themselves. So if you come around the corner, if you walk around the eggplants, you can see we've already started harvesting some of our varieties, but some of our varieties are just getting ready right now. So we grow 11 different varieties of rice on Randall's Island. This is actually the variety that we started with around four, five years ago, four years ago. This is called Koshi Hikari, and it's a sushi grade rice, which means that it binds together nicely. So it's a little different than, say, like a basmati rice. If you've ever tried to make sushi with basmati rice, you can roll all you want, and as soon as you let go and call it good, the whole thing just sort of explodes and falls down on the plate. This risotto rice, this sushi rice will really hold together nicely. But if you come on in, you can also start to see how the differences in these varieties really affect the way they grow. So some of them were ready, like these guys over here, the Italian varieties on the far end, were ready to harvest a few weeks ago. So they've already come out. But here we have some varieties. This is a Carolina variety. It's called Blue Bonnet. I love that name. <laughs> um, but it's very tall. And it ends up making these really beautiful seed heads. Well, down here, we have a variety that was actually developed by Cornell University. Name's a little less glamorous. It's <laughs> M102, but, um, but what's neat is when you compare it to something like this one down here, which is a red rice, you can see how this rice, the leaves stick up above the seed heads, and they end up actually protecting the seed heads from birds, from sun scorch, things like that. So we've got a lot of different growing habits all together. How do you choose the different types of rice that you pick for the farm? Sometimes it's just finding what's available to us. It's very hard in the Northeast to find varieties of rice that will grow and mature before it gets too cold here. And sometimes it's it's just talking with other people who are growing and we trade seeds all the time, trade stories. Um, what's been successful for them, what's been successful for us. Do they do it outside on kind of like a dry field or do they go into a wet paddy? Do they do a system like we do where it's, it's built up, where it's sort of an artificial field? Um, that kind of trading of almost like an oral culture along with the seeds is, 
it's not only a lot of fun, but it's actually a really important part of agriculture. That agriculture really is this connection between people and the food they eat. And so we're really trying to propagate that idea here in the farm. Thanks a lot, Nick, for taking the time. My so everybody, thank you for coming out and for being with us for our first Facebook Live. Um, feel free to come out and explore the farm yourself at our Harvest Festival, which, as Nick said, is October 1st here on the farm from from 12 p.m. to 1 to 4 p.m. Sorry, we had bad service there for a second. And also come out to our Get Hooked event, which is this Saturday um, at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you can go on our website for more details. So thanks again, and we'll see you at the park.